Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, unfortunately, we're seeing bugs all over the country. If you have insects in your corn, your soybeans, or your wheat, you may be looking for some options. We'll talk through those today. Well, you may be out in those fields anyway doing a little bit of soil testing. You say, what? Soil testing in the middle of the year? Yes, you need to be out there doing some pre-side dress nitrate tests. Now's a great time to see what is left in your soil and how much more nitrogen you may need to finish this crop out. During our Weed of the Week, we'll feature arguably the worst weed you can have in the United States today, but don't worry, we'll show you how to control it on your farm coming up later in the show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Our Farm Basics topic today is shelter belts. Well, when you think about shelter belts, you may be thinking, why do we have shelter belts? Because as you drive across the country in some areas, you just see the farm buildings and the house and really no trees. In other parts of the country, you see all kinds of trees around every farm. When I was younger, I was up in North Dakota visiting a historic farm site, and there were really no trees and all the buildings were kind of angled, so the wind from the northwest, which is the predominant wind in North Dakota, the wind would blow right through these buildings. And, and I asked the person giving the tour, I said, this seems really funny, because around the farm I grew up on, my dad put trees to block that northwest wind to keep uh, snow out and these kinds of things in the winter, but here, it's just gonna be a wind tunnel. And she said, that's exactly why they did these buildings. That's really nice for you to notice that. And I said, why would they want a wind tunnel? She goes, well, they didn't really have any way to control mosquitoes back in the 1800s. But the reason that we had a shelter belt around our farm growing up is we didn't want the wind. We wanted to try and block that wind so it wasn't just howling through our place all the time. What we really want to focus on today is shelter belt management. So just a couple of years ago, we put in a new shelter belt around one of our places. And I was talking to some people in our county before we put this in, and I asked about fertility and I wanted to get their input on fertility. And they said, well, most soils around here are just fine. You don't have to fertilize. <laughs> and I thought, what are you talking about? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You want to have great fertility for your trees so they can get growing as quickly as possible and be as healthy as possible. Because we're going to talk also today about weeds, insects, and diseases in that shelter belt. Well, I can promise you this. If you've got a much healthier tree, it is much more tolerant to weeds, insects, and diseases. The number one thing you need to look at on your soil test is not only soil pH like we always talk about, but it's that base saturation K percentage. Just think about how much potassium it takes to raise a good stock for corn, soybeans, or wheat. It takes that much more for a tree. Just think about the girth that you want in that tree trunk. We want seven to eight percent base saturation K. So what we did after we soil tested, we put a thousand pounds of potash out there on this ground this is your one chance when you put that shelter belt in. Yes, it's possible to put fertility out later on. So you can certainly fertilize after the shelter belt is in, but it's just harder to get it down into the ground because potassium, phosphorus, they don't move much in soil. It's just going to take a long time for them to get down to the roots. So what I'm trying to say is before you put a shelter belt in, get the P and K right, get your soil pH right, get all those micronutrients taken care of right up front, and then you're gonna find that you're gonna have a lot more early growth, a lot better survivability, and a lot better long-term future for that shelter belt. Well, and as you're establishing a brand new shelter belt, we like to keep it weed free in between the trees. So there's less competition for water and for nutrients with the trees. However, you're gonna to wanna to get grass growing out in that shelter belt to manage the soil, keep it in place, those types of things, and for the appearance. So as you're putting that grass in, weed control is gonna be essential. We like to look at the very early spring and the very late fall as the best times to control weeds. That way you don't have leaves on the trees, they aren't budding, all those kinds of things. We can get weeds out of there like dandelions and other things, and then keep it mowed up if you can during the season. Yeah, so typically we're running the highest labeled rate of 2,4-D, 
before we have budding in the spring and after the leaves drop in the fall. So if you can do that and those two times, generally speaking, your shelter belt stays pretty clean for weeds. Then you just have to scout for insects. Typically diseases aren't a big problem if you have the fertility right, but there are certainly insecticides and fungicides you can spray in your shelter belt if you need to. Keeping shelter belts weed free and keeping those trees healthy is important because it could be a spot where our weed of the week could get a start. Can you identify this week's weed? A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Aerial fungicide and insecticide application means high speed, low volume, and high cost to reach the top of the plant canopy. But 360 Undercover is a low speed, high volume application system that provides precision placement under the crop canopy. You hit the target and get coverage on both the top and underside of leaves. Plus, 360 Undercover mounts to the boom of your self-propelled sprayer so you or your ag retailer can get more value from this important machine. Boost efficacy with 360 Undercover. Learn more at 360yieldcenter.com. Avoid dry run failures with the new Hypro Force Field Pump. Providing the ultimate protection, this wet seal pump will save you on costly in-season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. Hypro, helping you spray better. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. As a farmer, one of your goals every year is likely to cut costs or just to spend as little as possible and yet get as much yield as possible. Well, one of the things that you can manage every single year is nitrogen in your cornfields. Well, how are you going to do that accurately? Well, one of the ways is getting a pre dress nitrate test. We're going to talk about that today. When it comes to growing lots of bushels of corn, one of the most important things is getting your nitrogen just right. You don't want to have too much yet you don't want to have too little. Now when I say you don't want to have too much, a lot of guys would say, wait a second, what are you talking about? I'd rather err on the side of having a little too much than not having enough. I understand that thinking because a lot of the research that we've seen over the last generation has been, don't run short on nitrogen, you're going to lose yield if you run short. So guys tend to have a little bit too much. Here's the challenge though, environmental regulations. When we look at different issues that are happening across the country, one of the biggest concerns that municipalities have had is, well, there's too much nitrate in the water. The drinking water standard in our country is 10 parts per million of nitrate in the water. So if there's ever a time where it's over 10 parts per million, well, people get really nervous about that. Well, guess what? There's a lot of ways that nitrate get into water, uh, but farmers are a small part of the population and control a large share of the land. And so we're a pretty easy target. We get a big target on our back if we don't manage this nitrogen thing right. So when we look at in-season management, the pre side dress nitrate test is a great tool and it's very inexpensive to use. Before you use that though, we'd really like to see what your soil test says. 
can you handle as much nitrogen as you want to put out this spring or at any time during the year? Look at your cation exchange capacity, multiply that times 10, that'll tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. In addition to that, take a look at your organic matter levels. It all depends on where you're at in the country and your amount of heat and everything, but on our farm we're typically figuring 20 pounds of nitrogen that we get for free every year per each percent of organic matter. So if we had 5% organic matter, 5 times 20 is 100. So if we've got 100 that's going to come available through the organic matter, let's say we started the season with 50, well that's already 150 pounds. What I'm trying to say here is, in a lot of cases, it's pretty easy to overdo it on nitrogen if you don't factor in what you already have in the soil and the organic matter that's coming available uh, through that mineralization process. So to get a better idea of what you actually need at the time, that's where we talk about this pre nitrate test. And it's really pretty simple. You can sample 0 to 12 inches, or in a lot of cases people also sample 12 to 24 inches, and then just send that in. It's only roughly a $5 test, and then at least you have an idea, well how much nitrate is in the soil right now, today? Okay, just three quick points on what will happen if you overdo the nitrogen in your field. Number one, you wasted money. That's obvious, right? You wasted money. Number two, the environmental thing that I already talked about. It's not good for the environment to, to waste something because nitrate will leach down through your soil and could end up in groundwater. But the third thing is one that a lot of people don't think of, nutrient balance. What I'm talking about here specifically is lodging. Now, if you've ever seen corn go down, why does corn fall down? You may say, well, big winds, or I ran short of potassium. Well, maybe you ran short of potassium, maybe you had so much nitrogen out there that your crop was just growing too much and focused on, I'm going to get real big and tall and never really got that good stable stock underneath it. We see it a lot of times in small grains. If you overdo nitrogen, you have lodging all over the place in your fields. It's the same in corn. If we way overdo the N and we don't have the potassium to match, we're going to see some lodging and other issues in the field. And that could also include a greater susceptibility to some of the real common diseases like gray leaf spot or northern corn leaf blight. So before you make your late season nitrogen applications, we really encourage you pull pre side dress nitrate tests. Now certainly you can also use Farmer's Edge or Climate or some of these other services that will monitor your fields and give you a general understanding of how much nitrogen is left out there too. But if you want to double check some of those things also, you can pull at least a few pre side dress nitrate tests. Again, they're inexpensive. They're going to really help you fine tune your overall nitrogen management program. Managing nitrogen is really important and managing weeds is as well. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? One of the biggest yield limiting factors on farms is even crop emergence. And only one closing wheel will get your growing season started right. Furrow Cruiser spiked closing wheels from Copperhead Ag are proven to yield better than standard rubber tire and cast iron closing wheels in all conditions. With yield gains that give you a return on investment the first season, there's no reason to run a standard closing system again. Visit CopperheadAG.com today to get your 2017 growing season started right. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. 
For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. One of the best things that's happened for farmers in the last few years has been insecticide prices have absolutely crashed. It's awesome. So if you've got some bugs, you've got to throw out the old insect thresholds. It doesn't take very many bugs now to justify treatment when it costs less than $2 an acre for a good pyrethroid. You're sure right, Brian. The prices have come way down and they're very economical now in any crop. Let's start with wheat, for example. Guys say, man, I gotta cut my expenses this year in wheat. But when you look at insecticides, it may take less than a bushel of wheat to more than double your money on an insecticide investment. Well, why wouldn't you stop a problem insect if you're gonna at least double your money with hardly any bugs in the field? The key here is to get out and scout. Anytime you're in that wheat field on a regular basis, you should be scouting. Before you make any application, you should be scouting because the pyrethroids could be tank mixed with almost anything else you're doing in a wheat field. Well, it's not and just wheat, Darren. It's corn, soybeans, pass. wheat, almost any crop that you're in. And that's what we wanted to stress today is just scout, like Darren said, but you've got to check your fields before you start spraying. Scouting while you're in the sprayer, spraying your herbicide doesn't count. Now it's too late. Now you're going to have to go make another trip and it costs you more money. So that's all we're getting at here. That's the main point of what we wanted to talk about today is simply, hey, these insecticide prices are dirt cheap now. They can be combined with most other things, whether it's foliar fertilizer, herbicide, fungicide, you name it, just make sure you're scouting for bugs first and throw out the old thresholds. They don't mean anything anymore because the economics now have changed. Crop prices are worth way more than they were 15 years ago and insecticide prices are way less than they were 15 years ago. And to top it all off, our yield goals are a lot higher. So you can really justify an insecticide treatment, but you've got to find some harmful bugs out there first before you decide to spray. Ah, that's the real key here. We aren't suggesting that you just throw in an insecticide because it is inexpensive in every spray pass you're making in your field. No way. We're definitely interested in scouting those fields first, looking to find problem insects that could rob yield. If we find them, then see how many there are. Now, if there's two bugs in the whole field, it's not worth treating. But if there's two bugs on every plant, it's a slam dunk. You've got to get out there and treat or we're going to have a problem. We don't want to kill off the beneficials that could take care of the job for us. But at the same time, we don't want to let problem bugs blow up on us and become a big problem later in the season. In terms of which insecticide you should use, we mentioned the cheap pyrethroids. That's great. But there are other pyrethroids too, like for example, bifenthrin, that's brigade or capture. That's a step up. That gives you some activity on mites. You can use Lorsban. That's an organophosphate product. There are a few other insecticides out there too, but really it's typically pyrethroids or Lorsban. Yeah, how important was that, uh, that Lorsban didn't get taken off the market? Well, we really needed Lorsban because otherwise most guys were just going to be stuck with a pyrethroid. We want to rotate modes of action. All right, now when we think about Lorsban, can you mix that with anything like you can with the pyrethroids? Well, you can mix it with some things, but Lorsban's hot. So I don't encourage you to mix Lorsban ever with foliar fertilizer, and you have to be careful about certain herbicides and fungicides like Bucktrol, for example, or maybe even Headline. Okay, length of control with pyrethroids and Lorsban. And they're both fairly similar. They're not gonna last nearly as long as most of the companies will tell you they're gonna last. You can probably expect seven to 10 days worth of residual. That's usually about it. And the knockdown on Lorsban is definitely quicker. Knockdown than the on Lorsban is quicker, especially when we're talking aphids. So you have to look at what bug are you really after? Is it going to do a great job on that bug? Is it going to do a quick job on that bug? That type of thing. Okay, how about re-entry intervals? Well, it's going to vary depending on the crop and the use rate, and that type of thing, maybe even the state. So you just have to take a look at what the label is. In a lot of cases, we'll tell you, hey, once the, the stuff has dried on the plant, so you can't physically get it on you, usually you're safe, but check the label. All right, and one last thing we hear about is mite flare-ups. How does that happen? Well, what happens is if you've got a cheap pyrethroid, that's great for most bugs, but it's not going to kill mites.
The problem though is when you go out and spray, you kill all your aphids, your bean leaf beetles, all that type of thing, you also kill the beneficials that might control the mites. So now the mites have nothing to stop them out in the field and they flare up. So that's where if you're worried about that, you might want to switch over to Lorsban or Bifenthrin. Unfortunately, with spider mites on the coast, east coast, west coast, maybe even down in the southern United States, we've got resistance. So Bifenthrin and Lorsban don't work real well. That's where you have to start looking at things like Zeal, Oberon, Onager. Look at something else to get those mites under control. Well, foliar insecticides are certainly an important part of the crop protection system for corn, soybeans, wheat, and other crops. Take a look at the foliars. They've come way down in price, and the return on investment is very good. Well, return on investment is always good if you're trying to control our Weed of the Week. I'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up next. Our weed of the week certainly had some buildup today when Brian said it may be the worst weed you could ever possibly have. I, think, I don't know if I said ever possibly, I, but it could be I, the I worst weed exactly in the United States words. today. But yes, it's a pretty bad one. It is water hemp. Yep, now, a lot of people want to talk about palmer pigweed. Well, palmer pigweed and water hemp are virtually identical plants. They're both smooth pigweeds that can put on over a million seeds per plant. But the good news here is they're both annual plants. Well, and because they're annuals, they've got to come and germinate from a seed every year. Yep. Now, we think about these as a little bit warmer season weeds. So they aren't the first thing that starts up in the field in the spring. Uh, but after you get that crop in, a few weeks later, usually we start to see the pigweeds come. So if we can get a good pre-emerge program, they're still going to have enough power to take out at least that first flush of water hemp. All right. Unfortunately, a lot of water hemp is both Roundup resistant and ALS resistant. So be smart about which pre's you're going to use. I talk to a lot of farmers who say, oh, I've got two pre's out there in my corn and in my soybeans. And I go, well, yeah, but which ones are you using? And then they tell me and I go, well, that's an ALS, that's an ALS, that's an ALS. Well, what, what help did that give you on water hemp? Not much. So be thinking about that all the time. Best thing you can do in soybeans, use the three pre's we talk about all the time, Metribuse and a PPO like Valor Authority and one of the yellows. Yeah, and you can also check these modes of action with the Ag PhD Mode of Action app. So you can put in the products that you're using and it'll tell you exactly what modes of action you're using. That way you can also use different ones when you get to corn. So in corn, for example, a lot of the pre's have a group 15 in them and then they add in a broadleaf killer. If we're using that group 15 as a pre in soybeans as well, we should probably be doing something a little bit different in corn. Okay, in corn post-emerge, really like the HPPDs, otherwise status is great, add a little bit of atrazine to either one of them. In soybeans, you really need to switch over to extend beans and use dicamba, or you could go Liberty beans and use Liberty. In conventional beans or Roundup beans, you got Flexstar and Cobra. They're okay, but they're not nearly as good as what Liberty or dicamba would be. In wheat, we like to start with sharpened down and we come back post-emerge either with Talonor or Husky at the high rate. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week water hemp, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. We've got teams all over talking about low salt, micronutrient, high efficiency fertilizer teams like it's something new. What's your take? I tell you, Don, AgroLiquid team has had these technologies for over 30 years. And really, unprecedented application versatility, compatibility, and ease of use. So, they're your pick for the championship season. You bet. Their full line of nutrients is going to take them all the way to the root zone. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Thanks, Don. Dave, after the impressive turnaround last year, what are your plans for the coming season? Well, as you know, I changed teams mid-season last year. Now I know my AgroLiquid partners are ready to go to work. I'm completely happy with the performance and the level of dedication I get from AgroLiquid. From the guys in the field? Everyone at AgroLiquid. I believe AgroLiquid has me on the road to success. There you have it, Don. Dave has a plan for another championship season with AgroLiquid. They're my pick, too. AgroLiquid's going all the way. 
Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Dealers, repair shops, and other ag parts resellers, this message is for you. Looking to save money on your parts purchases? Parts Express can help. We have over 3,000 popular items for tractors and combines priced at a level to save you and your customers money. In this tough ag economy, who wouldn't want to save on parts? Parts Express prides itself with old-fashioned service and easy-to-do business with environment. Go to parts-exp.com to see our parts offering and become a Parts Express dealer today. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Spraying fungicides this year? Is your sprayer set up to properly achieve the best performance from your fungicide applications? In today's Iron Talk, I'll show you a small change that can make a big difference for you. First of all, with fungicides, you have to understand how they work in order to set up your sprayer to optimize their performance. There are two transport systems in the plant called the xylem and the phloem. The xylem can only move things upward in the plant. The phloem moves things like nutrients and water both up and down in the plant. Fungicides, once they're inside the plant, only move in the xylem. One other important consideration is that fungicides can only protect the leaves and plant parts that are out at the time of application and that you get adequate coverage on. Most sprayers I look at across the country are set up perfectly for spraying Roundup. For fungicides, you need to make an important change. You should use more spray volume than you should with something like Roundup. 15 to 20 gallons is ideal because your crop is up and has some size to it and now you need the volume to cover those plants. Secondly, you need the correct spray tips to make smaller droplets to get the best coverage. Now flat fans work well, but I like the Guardian Air Twin nozzles for consistently sized smaller to medium droplets and better coverage, especially in cornfields and with wheat flag leaves and heads. Use the free Ag PhD Spray Tips app to help you pick the best nozzle for the specific fungicide and spray conditions on your farm. Finally, spray pressure should be fairly high to get penetration down through the crop canopy and to coat the plants. Spraying a fungicide is a lot different than spraying straight Roundup. We aren't nearly as worried about drift, and we need to have excellent coverage to get the job done. Use Guardian Air Twin nozzles with more water volume per acre and a higher spray pressure to protect your crop. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, we're out of time for today's show, but before we go, we invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us on the Rural Radio Channel, that's Sirius XM 147, each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We've got another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Did you realize that a healthy soil only contains about 50% dirt? In order for the soil microbes and plants to work together properly, soil should contain 25% air and 25% water. 
Today's farming practices are designed around maintaining that healthy balance. To learn more, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.